So at this stage, I feel like the pose is really dialed in to the point that I want to take it using Transpose Master. I've got the hands, the torso, and the pelvic and head masses. They're all dialed in in a, a rhythm that I'm liking. I like the relationship between the parts. It just feels like a, a cool position. It feels like there's a lot of character in here. So I'm, I'm, it is likely I'll go back and tweak things, but it might be the position of fingers or the position of an arm. I don't think I'm going to need to make big changes uh, to things like the head, for example, where I'd want to keep the eyes and teeth subtools locked in with the body. So I feel like at this stage it's safe to go ahead and transfer this pose over and then continue working into the high-res figure. So under Transpose Master, I'm going to turn on Layers, and it's going to copy all of my, layer, all of my pose information into a new layer for each subtool. And I will click T-Pose to sub-T. It automatically makes everything visible and then transfers that pose data over for the body. And now it'll do the same thing for the eyes or the teeth and then the eyes. So each one switches over and the pose transfer is now complete. So under the tool menu, if I go to the layers menu, you can see we've got a layer here which represents the pose data. So I can turn that layer on and off so if I want to return to a neutral position, I'll just turn that layer off. Now I've got an extra layer up here. Uh, I don't want this turned on, so I'm going to leave this turned off, and I'm just going to click either Delete or Merge Down. Oops, don't want to merge down. Let's undo that, and we'll just delete that top layer. There we go. So now I've just got a single layer for my pose data. That extra layer was just a leftover from a, an earlier sculpting session, so it's not uh, it's not necessary to hang on to that. So now you'll see at this stage, if I want to start sculpting, I need to create a layer to do that. Since I've got a layer now, I need to have a layer that I sculpt on. Now I could sculpt into that pose layer, but I'd like to keep the uh, the, the body corrections, the form corrections, on their own layer. Uh, I can always collapse them together, so I just have a single layer here. But I want to come in here and just tweak and correct some of the, the scapula forms here, the shoulder forms. To hide those legs again. And go in with the clay tubes brush. And I'll turn off the alpha on clay tubes. So you see that pose is transferred over nicely, and I'm going to go in and continue to refine some of the forms in the hands, for example. Just like I was fixing issues on the back, and just give it an overall pass of, of correction to the forms, and just to really you know, give the impression of the bone and muscle contracting and extending and really deforming uh, in this position. I'm going to go ahead and save my work.
and I'm going to note in the file name that it is posed. This stage, I'm just going through with the move brush and making some little adjustments using clay tubes as well, just trying to further refine the body now in relation to that pose, adding some asymmetry in those veins as well. This is a lot of this is just about breaking the symmetry too, because there was some s symmetrical details that I just want to get rid of. Catching shadow again around the serratus muscles as well as the ribs. And here I'm just making, you know, stretch marks, just trying to stroke in the direction that the skin would flow. Now at this stage, I'm going to be working on the ears. And I've turned on Posable Symmetry, which just means that uh, I went to the Transform menu up there and enabled Posable Symmetry. And that just means that it's going to sculpt symmetrically on both sides of a posed model. That's all that is. You'll know that you've got Posable Symmetry if your cursor is green. If for any reason it can't store a symmetry map, it just will tell you. It'll say that symmetry map was not stored, uh, in which case you, you know, you just have to manually sculpt both ears if you didn't want to return to your neutral position and then sculpt them and then repose. So right now I've masked out the inner ear, which would be the, uh, the anti-helix. And I'm sculpting the helix, the outer most portion of the ear. Trying to get that, that shape as it kind of comes around and rolls under, creating this really nice deep undercut inside the ear. Now I've inverted the mask so I can start to suggest the anti-helix, which is the Y-shaped bit that comes around the inside of the ear. Ears are fantastically fun to sculpt, I think, especially if, if you just have a, a generalized idea of what the different shapes are, because you can break them down into about probably one, two, three, four different shapes. Really, you could break them down into a couple more than that, but four shapes would get you by. And once you've got those four shapes, you know, the the tragus that I'm working on right here, the helix, the anti-helix, and the lobe, you can sculpt them on their own. They're very, very simple forms. And then you, you know, socket them together and just remember that you need to look at the ears from the top and the bottom because they don't sit flat on the head. The helix tends to sit at one angle, and the anti-helix actually will sometimes sit at another angle. So you'll see the anti-helix sticking out from the helix, like I'm about to do here. See, I'm actually going to use the move brush to pull the anti-helix out a bit. Now adjusting the helix. It's an enormous amount of character in ears. So I've seen 
a whole bunch of year life casts lined up together, and it's just amazing how different they all are for having the same fundamental parts. Just like people, I suppose, but you know, you can really see a lot of very cool character and ears and check them out in photos. Look in, look at some reference photos for a bunch of different types of ears. Here I'm pulling the anti-helix out using the move brush. And again, my cursor is green because I, I have posable symmetry turned on under the transpose menu, which allows me to sculpt both ears at the same time even while this figure is in pose. At this stage, we're ready to put the centipede in. We're going to create the centipede so it's coming up from the palm of his hand and then wrapping down his arm. And we're going to make this from a Z-sphere base mesh. So to do this, we're going to start by appending a Z-sphere into the subtool stack. And it comes in right here at the hand. You don't want to move the Z-sphere around because you're going to mess up your symmetry if you do that. Uh, it's best to make sure that the rest of your model is in position relative to the origin of the Z-sphere. It's just uh, a fact of ZBrush, the way it handles pivots can be pretty unforgiving when it comes to pivot points. It's one of the more you know, difficult aspects of working in ZBrush is just keeping those, uh, those pivots in place if you're trying to move stuff around. So the best thing that I find is just to move the other objects in relation to that Z-sphere. That way I know my pivots will stay the same. It's important to note that this guy is actually looking down the z-axis because I've rotated and posed him. So when I work on this z-sphere, I'm going to have z-symmetry turned on instead of x-symmetry. I'm going to actually turn off visibility on everything else for right now. I'm going to go into draw mode. And then under transform, I'm going to turn on z-symmetry. Here you can see that that is what gives me this, what would usually be x-symmetry. I'm going to draw a sphere on the top. I'm going to draw a sphere on the bottom to create my capsule shape. And I will turn on the body here just so we can create a length. I'm going to drag this point down and drag this sphere up. And I'm going to press the scale button, hold down Alt, and then click and drag between two spheres just to scale this down. There we go. So this will be the length of my centipede. I'm going to go in now, and I'm going to break this up into individual spheres. So I'm going to have a sphere, and then another sphere. This sphere, I'm going to grow the legs out of. A sphere, another sphere, sphere. Another sphere. I'm going to make these really tightly packed together. And the reason for this is because I want there to be spaces in between the legs so I can sculpt those areas. And I also want a space in between the legs so it's easier for me to pose this character. So we're going to use this Z sphere model here as our rig to pose with. And if I've got uh, joints that don't have legs attached to them in between each leg, it's going to be easier for me to bend the body. And let's grow a couple little strange hook forms off of his tail here. I find centipedes really disturbing. Got some reference of them up on my other screen right now, and I don't like looking at them. <laughs> Which is why I'm putting them in this character, because they're just really creepy. 
I'm going to make a larger one for the head here. Move that up. I'm going to make two long antennae, antennae, antennas. I'm going to draw a couple more spheres along the length of that. And we'll do his big pincers down here. There we go. Press the A key to preview our mesh. And there we go. Now we're going to add our legs. I'm going to turn off visibility on the body really quick. Go into draw mode, and I'll just click and drag. And that makes two legs on either side. And remember, we're going to skip every other Z sphere. working our way down. We'll go back through and we'll add child spheres on top of these and then stretch them out to make some long legs coming off this body. I'm going to click and drag, press shift to draw a new sphere. Pressing shift will snap that sphere to be the same size as the parent sphere. Just click and drag and then press shift and that snaps that new sphere to the same size and just makes it easier to uh, to keep the legs consistent rather than having you know one sphere being one size and the sphere at the end being another it can be a little bit difficult to make things the exact same size down the length which is exactly what you want with the legs there is some inconsistency at the size of each root sphere there along the length of the leg, but it's okay. Going into move mode, and I'm going to pull these legs out, and I'm going to try and keep them roughly the same length. Now if I want to, remember I can alt-click to scale legs just by clicking in between the two spheres on the chain. Here, for example, I can scale that down. This one, you'll notice, doesn't work. That's because this is the root Z sphere right here. You can see that this one won't allow me to scale those children off of it. There we go. Now I can, if I want to, you know, make some of these legs come out a little bit longer, create sort of an undulating effect to the length of the limbs. Might be kind of cool. It's all just a matter of shifting them around using the move brush. Now we need to add more joints here so we can have some curvature to the leg. Go into draw mode. Well, very simply, just draw 
or just click in between each of those legs or the joints on each of those legs and that's just going to add a new one. Now we'll go into move mode and I'll just look down the length of the centipede here and I'm just going to raise these. Ugh, now it's starting to look really buggy. Oops, undo those two moves. There we go. I have perspective turned off so I can just look straight down the orthographic front and the orthographic side just to make it easier to work on this. There we go. And unfortunately, my symmetry got shut off there. So I'm going to undo that because I actually do want this to be symmetrical. Let's see if I can. Oh, I'm out of undo. So let me go to edit, redo. Well, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. I'll just go ahead and turn off my symmetry again because I don't want to, there we go. Somehow I, I accidentally hit a key brush and didn't change my symmetry here on the, uh, or I accidentally pressed a key and turned off my symmetry as I was raising these legs, but it's all right. The legs I'm just going to be posing and I actually won't be posing the legs symmetrically, so that's nothing to worry too much about. We rely too much on symmetry too. It's always important to break the symmetry in your models um, before you call them finished. Because you have to spend a lot of time to sculpt symmetry in reality, in, in clay, but in ZBrush, having symmetry turned on the whole time makes things look a bit unnatural. Because it is absolutely perfect. So there we go. It looks a little comical right now, but once we've got some nice segments sculpted into them and a real creepy skin design, or shell design, exoskeletal design. He's going to look pretty nasty, especially crawling up this guy's arms. What kind of pet is this? Who keeps a pet like that? Well, I suppose this creepy guy does. So there we have it. We press the A key to exit out of our preview mesh. And we're going to make an adaptive skin now. So I will go to Tool, Adaptive Skin, Make Adaptive Skin. Now I will come up here. And append in the skin. There we have it. So I can turn that one on now and I can sculpt onto this guy. So let's save our work. And what we'll do is we'll sculpt. The, the exoskeletal and, and leg elements onto this. And then we'll use that original Z-sphere chain as a Z-sphere rig to pose it and wrap it around his arm. So let's go ahead and start sculpting him now. So you'll notice if I go into frame mode, the mesh that's created here, I'm gonna step down a couple of subdivision levels, has polygroups already baked into it. So if I were to go in with the move brush, for example, Each sphere here has a polygroup. I need to turn on my symmetry. Transform. See symmetry, there we go. So I can come in here and sculpt. And if I need to, control shift click to isolate polygroups. Now to make life just a little bit easier, I think I'm going to try. polygroup just the body because you see every one of these has its own 
or each each of those z spheres has its own polygroup. So you're getting two polygroups per length there. And I think it might be easier if I was just able to hide the legs entirely or unmask them. So scroll up here. So I'll go to polygroups now. Group visible. There we go. Now I've got those legs masked, so I don't need to worry about affecting them. And I'm just trying to create the segmentation of the body here. heads of these centipedes are really creepy. Big kind of blank palettes. Control, shift, click. Hide the body and those legs. Mask that, then invert the mask. That way I can work this area without accidentally grabbing the feet or the legs of the body. step up a subdivision level. Going in with the inflate brush and just inflating the antenna here. I don't want to lose that mass. Control shift click to show all again. I'm just smoothing down these legs to make them even narrower. There we go. I'm going to add a subdivision level. And we'll go back in and just do a little bit more to these uh, intersegments here, going in with the move brush. Masking out the legs and the head, so I'm not going to end up affecting those. Dial down my draw size a bit here. And just pull these out. Going in with the standard brush, and let's create some segments here.
Okay, at this stage, I'm going to go ahead and try and pose this centipede so it's crawling up his arm. So to do that, I'm going to, with the mesh selected, I'm going to select the Z-Sphere rig. Actually, with the mesh selected, I'm going to clone it so it's sitting in the tool palette here. And I'll go to my Z-Sphere chain, I'm going to hide that mesh. Come down here to rigging, click select mesh, and I'll select that skin. Now you'll see it sitting on top of the rig, and if I click bind mesh now, I'll be able to bind that skin to the Z-Sphere chain underneath. So it's now bound. If I go into, let's say, rotate mode, for example, I can pose. As you can see. So I'm going to, I'm getting some lag here. I'm actually going to unbind this, delete the mesh, go into my tool palette here, and the skin, I'm going to step down a couple of subdivision levels, so I'm posing the lower level. Now I'll come back down here and go to Rigging, select Mesh, now click Bind Mesh. And I'll have a much easier time posing this now because it's a lower resolution. So the first thing I want to do is rotate him forward into the hand here. And you see how I'm using the uh, each joint, rotating each joint around. So at this stage, I've actually scaled down the centipede using the size slider under the deformation menu. So it's, I feel like it's not competing with the size of the uh, of the character anymore, which is why I did that. 
So I'm going to press the A key to exit out of my preview mode. And I'm going to continue rotating and posing these bits. All right, now I'm going to go to the Adaptive Skin menu and click Make Adaptive Skin. That will create a new version of my mesh that's posed. I'll just click Append, and there's Skin C Sphere 7 right there. It is now the posed version of the model. There we have it right there. There's our posed version of the centipede. And I can go ahead and and sculpt, oops, sculpt further on the sky. There we go, I've got posable symmetry turned on now as well, so I can pose symmetric, or I can sculpt symmetrically onto this guy, which will be a huge, huge help, since obviously we don't want to have to do all of this uh, without symmetry turned on. It'll be a real pain. Step up the subdivision level, control D, do my transform menu, click use posable symmetry again, there we go. 